See, there, there's people that they, they uh, there's people that care so much about what their social circle says about them that they will pretty much curse God and die. Amen. I hope you're not like that today. But not these people in Joshua. You know what? They're they're walking around and they're armed openly. Their boldness and their intent. That was their intent to attack. Just so you know, I'm walking around your city today, but I'm going to be inside those walls tomorrow. You're going to taste this blade. Sword is meant to stab and slice. It's not meant to uh, brush your hair and, and cuddle with, with a teddy bear. You see? A sword has a purpose. Amen? But there's also a boldness and hope. Look in verse 8, Joshua 6, 8. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. I want to point out where it says, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew the trumpets. They blew the trumpets. What followed them? The ark of God. You know what? If you're trying to hide out, blowing a trumpet is probably a bad way to do it. You know, if, if you're trying to secretly kind of cruise around Jericho without being laughed at or anyone, you know, throwing rocks at you as you're walking walking around, blowing a trumpet is probably a bad idea. You know, you would ask a military general, how about, you know, when we're, when we're about to be in conflict, what about if I just blow a trumpet? They'd be like, you know what? You give away your concordance. That'd be the worst idea ever. They're going to know exactly where you are, and you're going to done die. You know? And um, But the hope you have in the Lord is what people without God would literally kill somebody for. You understand that? These people, they have the Ark of God. The people in Jericho just heard about the Ark of God. The people walking around had it. Right there. I mean, they couldn't touch it or else they'd be like Uza, but they had it. They knew where that ark was. Amen? Now, people in the world, they don't have that hope that you have. They, they don't have that assurance that, you know what, if they get stuck in some struggle or some sin or some hard place, they can just bow their head in prayer and God would hear them immediately. They don't have that like you do. You've done business with the Lord. Amen? You know what? They shoot up to get that feeling of security. They gotta shoot it into their vein. You know, uh, um, I, I have a, I have an old friend that uh, that uh, I used to work with at at H and E, and this guy had a, had a shooting up addiction, heroin, and um, I I could never prove it, but I think his uh, I think his uh, ex wife gave him what they call a hot shot where it's trash in this thing that they boil up and they put it in a syringe and it's pretty much like shooting up Ajax or something. Clorox bleach. And he shot it up and he died immediately. And uh, But you know what? Why would he be shooting up anyway? Because you know what? He didn't have the peace of the Lord. It turned to a needle. You know what? People drink themselves to sleep. They have no peace. They, have, they call it a nightcap. You know what it is? You don't have God. That's what it is. You have no rest because you're wicked. They, they need to be medicated to have peace, these people. You know, they have to go to a psychologist and say, you know what, um, I feel this even when they don't. Or I, I have trouble sleeping even when they maybe don't. You see what I'm saying? They have no peace. They need to be medicated. They don't want bow the knee to Jesus Christ. They'll do anything but that. They'll do anything but get right with God. Anything. You, you look at the prodigal son. You know now that prodigal son, he could have just said, hey, give me my inheritance, and he could have went to the next block, right? Bought a house, had a big party and a big pool. But that prodigal son had to go to a faraway country. Why? Because he was convicted about his father seeing what he was going to spend his whole inheritance on. That's wickedness. And guess what? When he woke up looking at the pig slop and he, and he hungered, 
This little Jewish boy looking at the pig slop because he hungered? He had no peace. Medication is not the answer. Drinking alcohol, shooting it up is not the answer. You need to get right with God. Amen. You know what? And, and maybe I didn't list what you're running to, but just fill in the blank. If you're not running to God, you're running to something else. And it's not going to work for long. Amen. It's not going to work for long. You know, I'm not going to act like, oh, it'll, it'll, it'll be a band-aid for a little while. It'll be a band-aid. You won't have to face it for a little while. But there's going to come a day where that band-aid's not going to hold anymore. And you're going to have to try to do something more extreme and more extreme and more extreme. You know, and uh, one, of, uh, one of my dad's um, church friends, their daughter, uh, was, uh, man, she was about 24 years old. This girl grew up in Bible studies, grew up in church, and she got her a little heroin addiction. And she died at 24 years old. Now, this girl, I mean, she probably could have married some CEO of some company just if she would have picked. You know, she was a beautiful little girl of 24, had her whole life ahead of her, and what did she turn to? Heroin. Now, whether she's sick or not, I guess that's going to be up to God. She definitely had a testimony. But wouldn't that be something to go die with a needle in your arm and go face God. And God's like, what are, you, what are you doing with this gift I gave you of life? That needle's hanging out. Uh, man, I was going to give you all these riches, but I can't now. I had, all, I had all this gold, silver, and precious stones just for you. But I can't give it to you now. You spent your substance. What a shame. You know what? These people, their boldness and intent, and their boldness and their hope. Their hope was in the Lord. That ark represented all the light that they had of God at that time. Hebrews 9 4 says, Which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. Three things. First, the pot of manna. That represented all of God's provisions. Every bill that God had paid in your life, is that that's the manna. You need to look back on those things sometimes and say, you know what? That month I wasn't making the electricity. You know, and somebody handed me a love offering. Or, or that month I, I wasn't able to make it. And somehow I was able to make it. God, that was your provision. Thank you, God. You know what? That's sitting in the Ark of the Covenant chasing these guys. And you know, they're walking around Jericho with God's provision. They said, you know what? We crossed that Red Sea. You know what? Now we're in the promised land. You know, God, God kept his word to me. And that's why I'm walking around Jericho. Next was Aaron's budded rod. Amen. That, that was a miracle. That was a miracle. Aaron's budded rod. And you know what? That was in the Ark of the Covenant. So as they're walking around Jericho, they're like, not only has God provided for me, He's just done some crazy miracles for me too. You know, if God wanted to, I bet He could knock down this whole wall. They're walking around Jericho. You know what? Aaron's budded rod. That represents God's miracles in your life. Some of you, it's a miracle you're even alive right now. Amen. Amen. But you know what? The table, the tables of the, of the covenant, that was the Word of God. And you know what? As they're cruising around, they not only have the provisions of God, the miracles of God, they have the Word of God with them. I don't know what it is, but maybe there's something about those three things that you need to really take note of when you're going, heading toward your Jericho, your impossible circumstance. You need to look at those three things in your life. Maybe you need to write them down on a paper. Amen? Maybe it needs to be in a sleeve of the Word of God. You know, they've got some open pages here. Write, write those provisions in. Write those miracles in there. And then you have your little Ark of the Covenant right there in your lap. Amen? Take note. You need to have boldness and hope. 
you don't have, uh, you're not without hope like people in this world are. They are literally without hope. Some of these people are about ready to kill themselves because Trump got in office. Some of these people, I mean, when Obama got in office, some of these Republicans were about to kill themselves. They have no hope. You know what? No matter who's in the White House, I have hope. I have hope. I don't know why I have hope. You know, I don't, it's definitely not because I deserve it. You know, I've outlived some better people than, than me. And, and they're dead, and I'm still here. And I don't know why. I don't deserve it. But you know what you need to do? You need to draw attention to the Bible and what God's done for you. You do. How are you going to draw attention to the Bible and what God's done for you? I can't testify for what God's done for you. Your wife can't, your husband can't, your parents, your grandparents can't. Only you can testify for what the Lord's done for you. But then they had a boldness and restraint. Joshua 6 and verse 10. And it says, And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then ye shall shout. See, God made His, know, his uh, will known to Joshua and the people of Israel in that judgment was to fall on this fenced up city. They knew it. They looked at Jericho, or they, they uh, had the spies come back, and Jericho's like, surely God's given this place into our hand. Because their hearts have melted because of us. He said, surely God's given us this. They knew judgment was falling on Jericho. They didn't know how. They didn't know necessarily when. But they knew it was coming. And you know what I'm telling you? God has told you judgment is falling on this world. Judgment's falling on this country. Judgment's falling on this city and town. Right now. Judgment is coming. Judgment, it's a pending doom. It's looming over. You, you could see it. And it's looming over. And judgment is coming. And you know what? God wanted these people to walk around Jericho and not to try to not to try to um, converse with them. You understand? Because what happens with a conversation? Eve found out, right? Eve found out what happens with a conversation. You know, uh, uh, Eve's like, oh, well, you know, this bad, big bad man, God. He doesn't even want us to touch this fruit. And, you know, and God's just... Because that devil places a seed of doubt by just a conversation. So God, J uh, Joshua is saying, I don't even want you talking to these people when you're walking around. You're just going to be sporting your swords. You're going to be, uh, we're going to bring the priests. We're going to let them know that the Lord is God. We're even going to bring the Ark of the Covenant. You know, our silly little box. A silly little box. And, uh, you know, they, they're going to laugh when you bring your silly little box around. And uh, they're going to say, oh, what's that? Oh, couldn't God just show himself right now to me? And, and you'd be like, oh, sure he could if he wanted to. Sure he could if he wanted to. But he wants you to humble your heart first. And he, he wants you to listen to what's in my silly little box. You know what? And then you open up your silly little box... And they start going, ah! Amen. Hey, Mom. I told you guys about Saunders. We go to the beer drinking place. He just, he quotes John 3.16 and the devils <laughs> come out of the walls, man. Right. It's like, you didn't even hear. He was saying nice things to you. And they couldn't handle it. Why? Because it was the Word of God. Boldness and restraint. Judges 2.2 2 says, And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You know what? Don't say a word. Judgment's coming on this place. There's no treaty to be had. There's no discussion to be made. There's not any room for negotiations. The Lord had spoken. It is finished. Understand the orders. You've got to understand the objectives. You've got to understand the obligation as well. We'll look in uh, Joshua 6 and verse 12. Or actually look at verse 14. Joshua 6 and verse 14. It says, And on the second day they compassed the city once, 
and returned into the camp. So they did six days. You know what? You got to be faithful and little. Faithful and little. If you're going to understand the obligation, you need to be faithful and little. What do you mean? You know what? Your defaults are set in practice. Uh, this is why there's so much training for the soldier before he ever hits the battlefield. So much training. Why? Because they have to get you to the point of when you get that tunnel vision and you can't hear because the bullets are flying and the bombs are dropping, that you just, by default, do what you were trained to. I mean, if, if you look at what these uh, basic training things, what they go through, they go through so much training before they ever fire a shot. And you know what? God is trying to put you in that same training. And He's given you your Bible. He's given you your church. He's given you your time for prayer. He's given you all these things. Your time for street preaching. Your time for all this training. And you know what? There's going to come a time where it'll be too late for training. The bombs are going to start dropping. And the bullets are going to start flying. And you know what? If you slacked up in training, it's going to show on the battlefield might be another casualty. Luke 19, 17 says, And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Why? Because he was faithful with little. You know, if God, God sees the faithfulness that you have in the little bit he's given you. You know, a lot of people... They don't want to serve God unless they could be behind the pulpit to do it. Yeah, I, saw, I used to see these guys in these other churches. They'd just come and they'd be there for a week and they'd tell that preacher, I want to preach. And he'd say, oh, well, stick around and you know, maybe I'll find something for you to do. And they wouldn't last a month before they left. Amen. Why? Because they thought there was something when they were nothing. You know what? And uh, they weren't faithful and little. But you also got to be faithful in labor. In verse 15 it says, Joshua 6 and verse 15, Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. Now think about it. For the days previous, they only passed around once. Now they got to pass around seven times. That's a big walk, man. It's hot out there. And we got to wear all these priestly robes. We got to carry all this, all this armor and these swords. And uh, we got to carry a box with us too, the Ark of the Covenant. Man, this is going to be a long day. It's going to be laborious. You know what? You, you as well must force yourself to the next level in your Christianity as the Day of Judgment approaches for this country. Amen. You know what? Maybe passing around once was okay until now. Now it's time to pass around seven times. You know what? You need to increase it in seriousness. You think about Lot's family. They didn't take him serious because he had a lethargic walk with God. And by the time it came to, judgment's coming, sons. Let's get out of here. They laughed at him as someone that mocked. You couldn't be serious. Man, you know, you're, you're, you're one of the, the gatekeepers of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you're going to tell me, oh, we better get out of here. You know, you're one of the politicians that we could credit for the wickedness of this city. You're part of it. And they thought he was someone that mocked. Because he was never serious about God before then. Wow. You know what? We need to increase in seriousness. We need to increase in fervor. You know what? As the end is approaching, there's going to be more and more need for fervor in the body of Christ. Quit measuring yourself by your neighbor and measure yourself by Jesus Christ Himself. You know, maybe you say, you know, uh, Brother Randy, you know, does A, B, C, and D, so if I can at least do that. No, no, no. You need to surpass me. Don't wait for me to catch up to you. You need to go. Amen? We, we don't need to be looking at each other and it's like, oh, well, Aaron only goes this far, so... I only need to go... No, no, no. You need to measure yourself by how far Jesus Christ went. How far did He go? You need to increase in fervor. You need to increase in seriousness. You need to increase frequency. You know what? Maybe the amount you've done for the past 10 years has been sufficient. It's not anymore. It's not anymore. This country's going down. 
your household's going to hell. Your family 